Two WRFM 103.7. Time to have a look at some of the things happening in the world of science. We do that with Professor John O'Connor from the University of Newcastle, who uh, is probably trying to figure out a scientific method to not get wet on the way back out here. But, it, but you did all right. There's but not a drop of rain on you. We've invented umbrellas. I've invented it. I know, but it is pretty wet. Um, plastics is something that for decades now have been the thorn in the side of many, and we've seemed to have you know, tried to recycle some, and it, it is what it is. However, just by sheer luck and happenstance, uh, they've figured out a particular way to or maybe apply a natural method to break some of this down even further. So we'll start, John, by heading into the, the uh, hive of bees. That's right. It's, uh, this is a classic case of serendipity, and that is the right person at the right place with the right background. And it's a scientist from the Biological Research Centre in Madrid, and he had a hobby. His hobby was keeping bees. Now... That's a great hobby, um, but they find, or he found where he lives, they have a pest, a bit like the varroa mite we have here, but this one isn't a mite, it's actually a worm. It's called a waxworm, and it gets into beehives, and it eats the wax, and it eats the some of the honey, and eats uh, some of the larvae of the mm. bees. I mean, it makes a real mess. I mean, I, I've seen pictures of the you know, hives. It's just not good. Oh, it's, it's horrible. Anyway, so the method of cleaning it up is to pull pull the the, uh, the wax out or pull, pull the, uh, the the leaves out, you know, and and just remove them manually. So he's doing that. He's plucking these wax worms off the uh, the, the uh, hive and dropping them into a plastic bag. And after a while, he looked down and saw that there were holes in the plastic bag. wasn't keeping the worms in very well. Now initially, he thought, okay, these things are chewing their way out. But after careful examination, which is the something that a microbiologist might do, yeah. not you or me necessarily, yeah. he found it was actually their saliva was eating away at the plastic. And being lights, light bulbs came on. Uh, I must say, this was five years ago he made this discovery. But over the last five years, they've worked their way through hundreds of proteins which are in waxworm um, saliva. And they've narrowed it down to two. And these two... Will uh, will dissolve or will actually break apart the bonds in polyethylene. Now polyethylene is the soft plastic, like the plastic bag he was using, the other soft plastics, and this makes up about thirty percent of the plastics that we create mm -hmm. and end up usually in landfill, because. The only way to currently break it down involves high temperature and mechanical means, and it's just not cost effective. So I'm guessing, John, this is not so much um, an attraction to the plastic, but it's just that having the the protein that that live that is part of the saliva in the plastic bag that just just by luck of the draw they just figure this out. Well, they digest wax, and I guess wax mm. is you know similar sort of bonding system to. Uh, to plastic, so it's just yeah, we're just lucky that yeah. it's produced the saliva, which while it can attack the wax, will also attack plastic. So it's a bit, bit of luck on our part. All right, now this this is kind of on on back of another story we did a long time ago, where there was another method to actually break down some of the harder plastics, like water bottles and etc. That's right, the, the you know, water bottles, drink, uh, drink bottles, and so forth. There was a discovery of, uh, a few years back of um, of an enzyme in a Japanese um, tip, garbage dump. Mm. And they found, just by chance again, that this thing would uh, dissolve or break apart the plastics that made uh, the hard plastics, pet bottles and so forth. And again, that's another big component of, of our waste stream. And the benefit of both of these, first off, it, it does it... Um, at low temperature, does it at room temperature, doesn't require a huge input of energy, it'll do it naturally. They can identify, once they have identified the enzymes, they can uh, refine them and pr produce the sim. Uh, in the case of the Japanese group, they accidentally uh, boosted the ability of the enzyme, made it a super <laughs> dissolver, which is great, Just it just works much more efficiently. But you can see the process here is now not one of uh, trying to compact it or burn it or put it in a dump or whatever. It's a process where we can get into a, the circular economy where, you know, this plastic comes in, it goes through a process, gets broken back to its, its, its component parts and can be reused. It can be remade into plastic bags or into pet bottles or into, into whatever. Now, again, I'm loving the fact that with every um, problem's the wrong word, but it'll do, there is quite often a natural solution. We just haven't found it yet until yeah, these two examples. So we've found a solution. Now, if there is a way to integrate that, this natural process, it's a low energy one, into the circular economy and get it all moving, 
I see that. You know what I see is the big win for here, John, apart from everything that you've mentioned. Can we please have the plastic bags back? (laughs) So-called demonised unfairly, incorrectly as single use. If we figured out a way to get them get them down, we'd all be better off. That's that's certainly one way of doing it. That's a way. (laughs) Or or there are other ways of making those bags that are are a lot uh, more environmentally friendly between Mm. now and then. So yeah, we 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 need a stopgap. But uh, you're right. It's uh, it gives us a chance to start uh, making a circular economy, and so your plastic bags come back to you as plastic bags mm. or come back to you as something else, some other form of plastic that we use. Because plastic, I mean, plastic is a really valuable product for us. Mm. And you're right, we don't want to demonise it. We want to find a way of, of reusing it. So these, we won't call them problems, these challenges mm. are out there for people to solve. The and with the ro- yeah. right situation, the right time, we might find the solution. Yeah, and it all started in a, a beehive this time around. This time around. And the garbage dump that previous. <laughs> All right, John, as always, a pleasure. We'll catch up with you in a fortnight, mate. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Mark. There he is, our Professor of Science from the University of Newcastle, uh, solving another challenge for us today at 2 and URFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.